Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and today I have a project that is unlike any that I've ever done before and I wanted to bring you all along for the fun. Um, today I'm going to be attempting to recreate an outfit that I saw in a kid's picture book. So I found this picture book at the library last year and I got it on half price day, so it was 28 cents, and it's just a really sweet book from the 50s. Um, the reason I picked it up is not necessarily for reading to my kids because it's in pretty bad condition, um, but it just had really sweet old illustrations, and I just really love this style of art. And as I was flipping through it, I found an outfit that I thought was really cute and I want to try to recreate today. So it is what the mom is wearing in the, um, in the book. And it looks like a little dress that has kind of a dungaree type top. And then the bottom is a skirt. Um, there's another picture of it. There's only two pictures of it in the whole book. And um, so you can see that it has pockets and I just thought it was really a cute outfit. And last year I used this pattern a couple of different times to make some dungarees. And um, when I was looking at the picture in the book, it just really reminded me of this outfit right here. So I want to try to recreate the picture in the book as best as I can. So. I have all the supplies and I'm going to show them to you right now. First up, I'll be using two different patterns. For the top, I'll be using this one and actually in two different sizes. I'm kind of in between sizes, so I'll be using um, size 14 and then kind of blending it out to a size 16 at the waist. And then I'll be using this pattern as well that is for a half circle skirt. Um, for the bottom portion and then I will be um, changing it to have pockets in a similar style to what like jeans have where um, it has like the curved opening for the pocket. Uh, I've never done that style of pocket before so um, here's hoping that it works out like I think it will. Um, but yeah, those are the patterns I'll be using. And then for my materials, I went to the thrift store yesterday. It was 75% off day. And I found some Pottery Barn curtains. They are a cotton and linen blend. They are not as dark a brown as I would have liked, but I only paid $2.50 for the two curtains. And um, that is definitely a really, really good price for fabric. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited to get started. I will try to bring you along and show you um, parts of the process as well, of course, how it turns out in the end and share my thoughts on it then. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. I already have all my pattern pieces cut out and I'm ready to start cutting them from the fabric. Since I'm kind of figuring the bottom part of this outfit out as I go, I'm going to work on the skirt part first, mainly the pockets, and I think I have it figured out. So I have the front of the skirt, here's the waistband, and here's the pocket opening. And I have the pen marking the right side of the fabric. And then underneath I have the pocket bag pieces. 
So this will get sewn onto here and flipped so that it's on the inside. Then there is the like lining part of the pocket that matches the outer fabric. And so this will get surged at the bottom and sewn onto the back bag piece, which will then be sewn to this one to form the bottom of the pocket. I have no idea if that makes sense how I'm explaining it, but I think that's how it should all work. And I'm going to start sewing it together to make sure I have all this right before I continue any further cutting out other pieces of this project. It is hard to tell on camera, but I got the pockets sewn on and I'm super happy they went on exactly as I had planned. So now I can move forward on cutting out the other pieces and sewing the rest of the garment together. So I got everything cut out, I think, um, and the pieces that were supposed to have interfacing have interfacing. Um, I forgot to mention earlier that I'm actually using the lining from the curtain as the um, lining pieces for the outfit uh, just to you know give it a purpose since I don't really have another use for it and um, it's still keeping my cost down to that two dollars and fifty cents so that's awesome um, but here's just the pieces I kind of have them all over the place and I'm ready to start sewing this thing together Thank I apologize for the lighting because I need the light here so I can sew instead of over there where it usually is for filming. Um, but I wanted to show you the progress that I've made so far. Here is the bodice front and back and I have put the facing on it. Um, I did not completely put it on though because right here I left it unsewn because instead of having I don't know where the pattern is. Anyway, instead of having the dungarees where the strap comes from the front and fastens in the back, I'm going to do that in reverse and have it come from the back and cross over to the front and fasten in the front. So I will need to place the straps in here to be sewn um, while it's on me. So I had to leave that area unsewn so I can figure out the exact placement later on. Um, so hopefully that all works out and isn't super hard to um, like properly finish later on. Um, so this is pretty much as far as it's getting for now. Um, now I'm going to work more on the skirt, putting the front and back together, and then getting the um, facing thing put on, oh, what's it called? I don't know, I can't find anything right now. This piece um, that is sewn to the front side and flipped to the back, and it is basically a stabilizer for the buttonholes that are sewn all down the entire side of the outfit. And um, I hope that the placement of the pocket doesn't interfere with the button closure. If anything, I would just leave the bottom button off and um, maybe put a snap down kind of like in the pocket if I have to. Otherwise, I'm hoping that I won't even need it to open up that far because the skirt should have more like hip room 
than what it has when it is pants. Um, so I'm kind of figuring out as I go. I, I feel like it's really slowing me down because of how much like figuring and adjusting that I'm having to do to customize this. Um, but I'm glad that I've already used this pattern several times before because even though I am referring to the directions, um, I'm not having to really um, like figure out what it's telling me to do at each step. I just kind of glance over, see what step I'm on, and I'm good to go. Um, so I'm very glad I'm already familiar with the pattern. But anyway, I am going to get these skirt pieces, and like I said, I'm going to mark how far up I need to sew the side, which I believe is about, let's see. Actually, right about to the bottom of this pocket is how high up I need to sew it. So hopefully uh, the buttons and everything will go on perfectly. Um, so I'm going to get this sewn together and kind of start trying things on to make sure that I'm on the right path because I did not actually measure myself before I started this. I just assumed my measurements were still the same as last time I used the pattern. Hopefully that works out. Um, anyway, I'm going to get to sewing this and we'll go from there. made a lot of progress and I am so close to being done. Um, so I have the bodice hooked onto the waistband which is hooked to the skirt and everything went together really really well. Um, the skirt ended up being just a little bit smaller in the waist opening than the waistband um, which I thought it might because I went ahead and cut it just a hair um, of a smaller curve than what the pattern had just in case they were different sizes. I'd rather it had been too small rather than too big because I can always trim it bigger. But anyway, so um, I got it worked out. I trimmed just a tiny bit off the skirt, got it sewn on, and now all I need to do is add the um, like facing piece here that the buttons are sewn onto and do the buttons and buttonholes um, no, actually I take that back. I'm not going to do the buttons and buttonholes. I'm going to pin the facing on and probably go ahead and just pin, like put this on and pin it together so that I can get the straps in position, um, and have Jeremiah get me the, uh, have Jeremiah help me pin the straps in the right place. Because remember I left that opening there so I can get those sewn in and get the buttons positioned for the straps first so that while I'm getting everything then fixed up for the side I know that um, it will all be sitting in the correct place and everything um, so just a few things that I have left the buttons and buttonholes will probably take the longest time and um, I haven't even gone through my buttons yet to decide on what I'm going to use I have a few buttons that I really like but I think I only have three of them and I need like I forget if it's nine or ten buttons for this so um, we shall see what I have hopefully I will have enough matching buttons to use because I really don't want to have to go to the store to buy something um, and then once all of that is done I will be hanging this up overnight um, or for like at least 12 hours so that if it's going to do any stretching at all it will do that before I hem the bottom since this is a half circle skirt um, part of the bottom is curved or you know it's a slight curve at the bottom and so the fabric can stretch and become misshapen and stuff the longer it is hung up and so I want to get as much of that out of the fabric as I can before I hem it so that it will look 
nice and even after it is hemmed. Um, but yeah, so that probably sounded like a lot more work left to do than what it actually is. But um, yeah, I'm going to get the little facing thing sewn on and then I'm going to um, probably go ahead and go dig through my button stash because it is getting close to dinner time and so I'll probably sew that on, dig through my buttons, eat dinner, and then get back to working on this. So. So I wanted to share an update. It is uh, later in the evening. It's not super late, but um, I have finished everything I can do tonight other than the hem. So here is how it looks. I got all the buttons and buttonholes done. Um, the spacing on one or two of the buttons is a little funny, even though I like marked them while I was wearing it and everything one at a time like I would mark one sew it on mark the next one sew it on um, so somehow I ended up with a little um, extra material there and I'm not sure exactly exactly what happened but that is okay I'm totally fine with that I am in love with the pockets I think they turned out so nice they're exactly how I wanted and the top turned out good I don't know if I can show the back there's the back with the crisscross. Jeremiah helped me on that part. And um, yeah, so I'm going to um, hang it up for the night and then hopefully tomorrow I can get it hemmed and take some pictures and I will be done with it. I am super happy with it and I can't wait to start wearing it out. Phew. So I wanted to share some thoughts and kind of wrap up this video, wrap up this project. Um, I didn't really talk about it in the video, but I started this project around noon on Saturday and I worked on it off and on throughout the day until about 8 or 9 in the evening. I did stop for lunch, dinner, some other breaks. So in total, it was probably about six hours of working that day. And then I hung it up to hang overnight, as I had mentioned earlier, and trimmed up the bottom the next day. I did this kind of different than what I've done before. I marked down from the waist seam and measured down 26 and a half inches and marked that all along the bottom edge and then cut along that line surged the cut edge and turned it over by about 3 8 inch and sewed it down. Um, I don't know if that's like a proper way to measure how long a uh, bottom edge of a skirt or dress should be, but it seems to have worked out. It looks pretty level in the pictures and everything. So it worked for me. Um, so in total, I probably spent maybe about eight hours working on this project, which is not bad at all, especially since I was um, trying to kind of recreate a specific look, as well as combining two patterns and drafting some of my own pattern pieces at the same time. So I am super happy with how it turned out. I love the look of it. And it dawned on me today, a couple of days later, that I should probably actually be calling this a pinafore style dress. Um, I think that is more typically what the style of dress would be called, not a dungaree dress or whatever I called it before. Um, so it is a pinafore style dress and when I wear it I actually kind of feel like a mashup of Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz and the Von Trapp family and I am I'm totally okay with that. 
So I did want to quickly talk about the two things that I don't love about this outfit. Um, first up is the little gap between the third and fourth buttons on the side. Um, I did not have this gap when I made my dungaree overalls from the same pattern um, last year. So I'm not really sure what happened. I think maybe when I... Um, did the bodice where I was adjusting it to be a size 14 at the bust and a 16 at the waist. I may have accidentally um, like curved down too far at the bottom edge, uh, which would have a little extra length there, or maybe it's, I don't, I don't really know what happened. Um, and I tried to fix the error, but short of sewing an actual like dart there, I just could not get it to lay flat. Along the way, I did notice that it seems a little lower waisted than my other overalls. So I did actually take up the waist seam a little bit, but I did it on the bottom side of the waistband instead of on the top side. So maybe that's where the problem happened. I don't really know. But I think it's one of those situations where like, I'm the only one that's going to notice it. it. You know, no one else is going to notice. They're not going to point it out or anything like that. So it's not really a big a deal. It's just that it's not completely perfect. Like it could be. Um, and then the other thing that I don't completely love is the color of the entire outfit. It is much much lighter than the original inspiration which of course I knew that going into it I made the decision to use a lighter color fabric because it's what I could find I have put this project on my to-do list I put it on like nine or ten months ago of I really want to make this outfit and I have since then been on the hunt for the perfect fabric and I obviously never found it and so I made the decision to use this lighter color fabric because it's better to get this project off the to-do list and into my closet so I can actually start using it. Um, so yeah, it's a little disappointing that it's not the really dark brown from the original inspiration, but at the same time, I am so happy to have it made and done so I can start using it. So I think that little bit of sacrifice is going to be totally okay because I'm going to get so much use out of this because I love this outfit so much. Like other than those two things, I love it so much. And in fact, I love it so much that I might even make another one in a different fabric so we'll see come like fall winter time uh, I may make this entire project again using some other fabrics because I've been wearing it today and I originally just planned on putting it on for the photos and then changing clothes but it is so comfortable and I love it so much that I took the photos like four hours ago and I still have the outfit on because I am enjoying wearing it so much like it is absolutely perfect to wear it is so comfortable it like fits up here but then it's you know like loose at the waist so it's not like pressing on my waist or anything and so I am absolutely loving it and I know I'm gonna wear it like all the time so I should probably just do myself a favor and make other versions so I can at least wear different variations of it all the time <laughs> By the way, a bonus perk of it having a skirt on the bottom instead of pants is I don't have to unbutton every single button every time I need to go to the bathroom like I have to with my other dungarees. That was definitely a downside of the typical dungarees like the ones shown on the pattern where it's the pants. I hope that you enjoyed this video because I definitely enjoyed making it and if you have not already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. And until next time, happy sewing. And there's a fly in here. And it is so annoying. So I apologize for the fly that keeps flying back and forth in front of the camera. <laughs> Bye.